you from? Who created you? The iPod is the top-selling digital music player on the market today. It racked up $6 million in sales in 2006 and currently making millions more. This MP3 phenomenon began in 2001 when Apple CEO Steve Jobs came up with the idea to create a digital music player with a brighter screen, simpler interface, and stronger, smaller memory chip hard drive that would allow the player to be small enough to fit in the user's pocket. A team of Apple engineers came together to create the first iPod using existing but unused memory chip hard drive technology. The original iPod has morphed into several other models including the iPod Mini, which has been replaced by the Nano, the Video and Picture iPods, and the iPod Shuffle. With its innovative design and ever shrinking size, it is no wonder that the iPod has dominated the digital music scene. But this revolution is not just the fairy tale it's made out to be. There's a darker side to the iPod's bright screen. People do not realize that living in a world where they can control their hearing environment is so tempting that it forces them to block out their surroundings and ignore the people around them. You become so comfortable in your iPod world that you forget you exist in this one. The iPod has almost reached the point where it is a necessity. Its signature white interface is recognized across the globe, a social icon so big that it can never be unfamiliar. It's in our homes, it's in our schools, on our buses, in our children's ears, yet it seems so harmless. It would take a simultaneous explosion of iPods for people to realize their danger, and that is why iPod revolution is so dangerous to our community. It harms us in such a subtle way we do not even realize the power it holds on our minds. So, Nano, your friend 30 Gig has been talking, and I was kind of hoping that you could cooperate and talk to So, Nano, since I see we're not going to get anywhere, I just think I should let you know your victims have been talking. Do you own an iPod? Yes, I do. Um, what are the negative effects of the iPod? Um, negative effects of an iPod, um, sometimes it gets stolen. Uh, do you think the iPod has a negative effect on society? I think it does, a little bit. Why? Because people like blow out their eardrums, and then they never listen to you, they'll be like, yeah, that's, that's about it. Hi, um, my name's Denny Mack and I'm from iPoly. I was making a documentary on the iPod revolution. I was wondering if I could ask, ask you a few questions. Yes, sure. Um, do you own an iPod yourself? Well, actually, I own the Samsung. Um, so you work at the Apple store, right, in the Bray Mall? Yes, that's correct, and my name's Tanisha. How long have you been working there? For about, I'll say, two and a half years. So you've been around iPods for a while now? Yes. Have you ever thought about how the iPod might affect society? Hmm. Now that you ask me that question, I would say, yeah, kind of. Um, you know, people off to themselves, not really paying attention too much. You have the kids crying for them, wanting to be popular, wanting to be cool with them. And I guess it kind of makes things a little difficult. I mean, you have the distinct pattern. So if you don't see that Apple logo, people will look at you and like, oh, you don't have this because it's not an apple.